Well, if you're following me and if you're following much more importantly, the Daily Wire and people like Matt Walsh, then you saw that just recently that we have experienced quite a victory in the state of Tennessee. I'll get to that in just a moment. But that victory came in the form, among other things, of Matt Walsh appearing before some politicians to discuss with them about the horrors of gender affirming care, while we also heard anecdotally from the other side about how important gender affirming care is. To, to have in people as young as eight and nine years old because we all know that those guys make the best decisions ever. So while the Democrats were left crying out for experts, they didn't actually present any experts at the, at the hearing that, that was uh, being held about this bill. And this is House Bill, by the way, 0001, I believe. And this is a bill banning gender-affirming care in the state of Tennessee for, for minors. Um, and, and so when I say that the left and the Democrats didn't bring up any experts whatsoever and that they were crying for experts, I mean this, that what they had was they had a whole group of people sharing their personal stories, but no actual experts on the subject whatsoever at all. And they were asking for expertise from the other side while presenting none of their own. And even when the other side brought experts, this is what they did with those experts. Are, are you a pediatric? What was your specialty? Uh, Dr. Hama, Hamada. I am board certified in I can't even talk obstetrics and gynecology as well as family medicine with a focus on sports medicine as well. Representative Clements, no endocrinology or pediatrics. Uh, that's part, well, pediatrics is part of family medicine, family medicine, and then also uh, with regards to endocrinology, that's a big portion of what we do in obstetrics and gynecology. And what's your formal training in that? Um, four years of medical school and residency with uh, oral and written boards. So as you can see, the cry for expertise and to bring real hard-hitting facts to this, to this hearing was absolutely ridiculous. Instead, the Democrats decided to present people like this father who has a transgender child uh, to, to plead the case for transgender people in um, in, in the state of Tennessee. So, so I want you to hear this dad's kind of statements about why he thinks that you should be able to allow your child to, uh, to go through supposed gender affirming care. So here's that. Now I'm the proud dad of a transgender son in Tennessee. On the evening our son came out to us, I immediately told him I loved him no matter what. Then I asked what he needed. Our first job was to help him socially transition, change his name, speak with family, friends, and to school. Sec you know, not only is it disturbing that a father does not have any grasp on reality, so much so that he is willing to argue this kind of thing before uh, a group of adults on behalf of his child, but, but the real disturbing thing here is, surprise, surprise, this gender-affirming dad has no understanding of what a dad is actually supposed to do. He said his job when he first found out that his child was trans was to help him transition. Well, that's your first job as a dad? This is a, goes back to the reality that even when a dad is in a home, it doesn't mean he's a dad or that he's actually doing what a dad should do. Because, by the way, a dad's first job is to protect his kid. And often, especially if you have kids, you know this, to protect your child from themselves because they are wrecking balls. And I don't mean the kind of nasty Miley Cyrus wrecking balls. I mean the ones that like say, hey, dad, watch me jump off the roof kind of wrecking balls, right? They're, they're, these guys are destruction machines, especially if you have little boys, and I've got two of them. Um, given the opportunity to perform an act of self-mutilation outside of the affirmation of adults who should know better, these kids will probably do it. And here's why. They're naive. Kids don't yet understand the repercussion for their actions. And so the reality is, is that kids can't make the decision that we're requesting them to make when it comes to especially this one. Uh, and this was in a previous episode where I was talking about Chloe Cole, but the decision to, to become infertile for the rest of your life. When you tell a 16-year-old, whether it's a boy or a girl, you're never going to have children again, 
they don't care because they don't have any concept of what that actually means. They have no gravity of the weight of the decision that they're about to make, that they are dooming themselves to a life of being infertile if they ever decide to go off these puberty-blocking drugs. But all of this either escapes the mind of the simple-minded Democrat or they know it full well and they are just flat evil because all they care about is political power. So when they stare in the face of an expert, they can dismiss him readily and they can cry over this anecdotal clip of this dad saying that it's not his job to protect his child, it's his job to as quickly as possible trans his child. Now, thankfully, we have real men out there like, like Matt Walsh who is willing to testify on behalf of kids who desperately need the help. So here is Matt Walsh also being grilled on his expertise on the subject. Just curious, you, 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 you've yeah. testified as to a lot of your own research, so I'm curious for what purpose you do that and what background you have to qualify you to speak to that. Well, Mr. my Mr. background Walsh. that qualifies me to speak to this is that I'm a human being with a brain and common sense and I have a soul. And so, therefore, I think it's a really bad idea to chemically castrate children. That is my experience. Um, also, I, I did, now it's true, I didn't, I didn't go to college, but I did go to school long enough to learn how to read so I can read the data for myself, and that's exactly what I've done. Now, there's a lot to say there about the fallacy of credentialism and people, you know, wanting you to produce all of your degrees before you can ever speak on a subject of any uh, of any value. Uh, and, and it's like, well, we do, we do still have that thing called common sense and common sense is what we can operate with in, 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 in the lack of pure expertise on a particular subject. This is, this is something that is clearly a fallacy in that the left loves to do it to try to obscure and to try to push away and to, and to try to disregard arguments that they don't actually have the capacity to undermine. And that's what we saw on display here. So, but pushing all that aside, because there's uh, one last thing I want to share from, our, uh, from the time at this hearing, uh, which is good news. It, pushing all that aside, though, uh, it's really important to understand that when you see leftists like these Democrats that attack Matt Walsh kicking and screaming. Oh, and by the way, these, these leftists who are also undermining this, this doctor who clearly has expertise that these politicians don't. Um, when you see these these politicians kicking and screaming and you see these activists whining, what you know beyond a shadow of a doubt is that you are close to winning. And that's why you must push beyond it. You must push beyond the cries of intolerance and the cries of homophobia and transphobia and Islamophobia and whatever phobia or ist somebody is going to try to throw at you. You must push beyond all of that nonsense because on the other side of that are kids who desperately need your help. Kids who need somebody to speak up for them because their parents are not speaking up for them. By the way, this is a side note, but I think this is the thing we often hear too, is that if these parents want to consensually bring their kids to like drag shows and consensually, consensually have their children you know, brought to a, to a butcher shop to have their healthy sex organs chopped off or to have um, gender affirm, affirming hormones shoved down their throat, then hey, it's a free country. But hopefully we know consent is not the highest value in a society of thinking people. Morality still exists, and that is what we should also judge our decision-making upon, what is right and what is wrong, and what is truly love, but unfortunately, we don't know that very much. But, unfor but fortunately, we are, we are seeing that some things are changing as we find people like Matt Walsh who are willing to display real, authentic love, not the kind of superficial love we talk about all the time, but the kind of love that is willing to stand up, get all of those names called at you, and still do what is right. Now, that is real authentic love. And on the other side of that, you find real change. Because here's the final clip I want to show you from that hearing that I think we can all celebrate about. Seeing no objection, we are voting on House Bill 1. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No. Eyes have it. Bill goes on to civil justice. So it passed. It passed. It is a time to celebrate because before long in Tennessee, it will be illegal to have drag shows for minors and it will be illegal to destroy the lives of children through hormone blockers and through uh, gender affirming hormones and through surgeries. It will be illegal and unthinkable to do in this state because of people like Matt Walsh. So Beyond the slam dunking and beyond the owning of Matt Walsh with the with owning libs and all of that kind of stuff and defending his performance at Nashville, 
pushing that aside, the most important thing here is that kids will have the opportunity to actually grow up where they won't have this kind of social pressure on them to do something that will cause lifelong damage in them. And that is something to celebrate. And since we're talking about love, let me bring it back home just a little bit to say this, that real love looks like this. Real love looks like, like what Matt did, what, um, what Landon Starbuck did, and what others went to do there that day in Nashville. That's what real love looks like. I hope you hear this if you hear anything today, that it's important for us to truly define love because you can put that label on anything and then it undermines what is perhaps one of the greatest virtues in all of mankind. And certainly as we move further and further away from Christianity and the American West and we move further and further from the God of the Bible, we are starting to define love any which way. So you just got done watching a small excerpt of a much larger episode. You can find the link to that full episode down below in the description of this video. So you definitely want to check that out because if you like that clip, you'll like the much larger episode. And while you're at it, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe and click that little bell to be notified when great new episodes of Indie Thinker come your way. Thanks for watching.